In this video, we're going to look at how to program this lathe part on the screen. Now, this lathe part should be loaded to your computer. If you go to File, then Open, you should find it in the Bobcat Cam Data folder, Bobcam, then your version number, and Examples. And this part is the Advanced Turning Tutorial 1. Now, I already have the part open here, and there's already a coordinate system defined. In order for the machining to know where to slice the section out of the part is, is based on this coordinate setup wherever the x-axis meets. In this case, the x and z is right here. We'll go ahead and choose that as our machine setup. So in our cam tree, we right-click machine setup, left-click reselect, and then pick the coordinate system. Then confirm our selection. And this sets up the axis of where this is going to be cut or where zero is on the part. This should match up on and how you're going to cut the part on the machine or where you're going to zero the part. In this case, I've set it to the face. The next thing to do is to set up the stock. We'll right-click turning stock, choose edit, and then define the size of the stock. In this case, we're going to say that our end of stock is at negative 4 inches and our stock diameter is also 4 inches. If this may have been pre-drilled, I might say that there's an internal diameter or if we're cutting out something like a ring. In this case, we'll just leave the internal diameter set to zero. Then we have our clearance values for our face, our diameter, and our internal diameter. Those are just clearance values for when the tool is approaching or wrapping by us the part. Now, the material in here, you do get an option of material selection, but unlike the mill, the material does not calculate the feed rates on the lathe. So this is an unimportant feature at this moment. We'll go ahead and choose OK. And then we could see our stock defined on the screen. The next thing to do is start adding toolpath. In this case, we'll right-click turning stock, then go to turn. And you'll see here with the first two items, rough and finish. Now, rough and finish are used for both turning and for facing, as well as for ID cuts or boring. Which way the toolpath is placed on the part or the direction of cut, everything is determined by settings inside the feature. Rough is if you want to cut multiple passes, and finish is if you just want to use apply a single pass or a finish pass. In this chase case, we're going to choose rough, and it loads our feature rough to the cam tree. We'll right-click geometry, left-click reselect, and then we get a display of where our plane is, where our x-axis is. So you can see where the plane's going to cut through the part and define our profile. In this case, we'll want to face this part. Let's go ahead and choose this face right here. And we'll confirm our selection. We'll come to our feature rough, go below that to rough, right-click and choose Edit. The first option here is for separate moves or canned cycles. Now, depending on your machine, if you have standard canned cycles, Bobcam can output the canned cycles for the machine. It makes much shorter code. If your machine does not have a canned cycle option, or if you prefer not to move, use that, these separate moves will output a long program of G-code that will drive the machine to cut the part. Our next option is whether we're turning or facing. Let's go ahead and turn this to face rough. And we could see the orientation of the picture and the way that the tool path will be generated. Our depth of cut, let's say, is 0.125 per pass. Our allowance will leave 0 0.01 for Z and X. And our face stock, let's say that there's an extra quarter inch of stock that we're going to remove on the face. Our system compensation, we'll leave turned on. Now, you could turn this on or off depending if you want to use the machine compensation. System compensation generates a centerline tool path based on the theoretical point of the tool. With system compensation off, it generates the exact profile of the geometry, and then it will be dependent on your machine's compensation being turned on. In this case, let's go ahead and use the system compensation. We'll come to the next items in the tree, which is rapids. 
the default will usually work. If you want to be more specific about whether if you depart X and Z at the same time, or if you depart X then Z, or whatever axis combination you want to change the departure to, you can override that here. As well as you can do a specified point in X then Z if you want to save some time between features. But in this case we'll go ahead and use the default rapid, which will go back to the tool home location set up on your tool. We'll choose the next item in the tree. Now, since this face was a little bit short from our stock, we're going to need to use a lead-in to come and remove the stock down to the face. In this case, I'll place in an extra or an additional two inches for the lead-in and X onto the face or onto the part. And our lead-out will go ahead and go an additional one inch. We'll say minus one. We'll come to the next item. We'll skip over tool and go to the actual tool. Now the tool in here you can either select from a user-defined database that you can set up with all of your tools which is discussed in another video or you can edit your tools on the fly in here. Let's go ahead and use the tool we already have with the 156 radius and a diamond insert. Now in here you have to set up your feed rates, your RPMs and your surface feed and your feed rates. You can also set up whether you're cutting with constant surface feed or RPM. The next tab here, orientation, has to do with if you're cutting an OD or an ID cut. So you choose your machine orientation here or the direction of your tool towards the cutting side. In this case we're cutting from out here then down so that would be a number five orientation. In the case of like the boring would use number eight or number what would be a number four on that page. But just know that this is based on the orientation or the direction that your tool's cutting from. Machine info includes the offset and tool number. Also that home position that we were talking about for the rapids for the tool's home position. In this case it's set to five 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 inches up and away from Z from X and Z zero. We'll choose OK. Then we'll right click on rough and compute the toolpath. And now we can see our toolpath coming towards the part, cutting down the face, past it, and then departing. Let's zoom out so we can see all of the toolpath. We could even change the toolpath's color by right clicking on the tool going to color, and we'll make this something that's a little more visible. So there's our toolpath for the facing. Let's go ahead and do the turning on the outside. We'll right click turning stock, go to turn, then rough. We'll select our geometry. Now in this case I want to cut this entire area, so we'll go ahead and set the selection to select whole bodies, and we'll pick the entire model. Now you do get some options here. You can change the rotation of the plane. Like before when we set up the zero where the X is, if we go ahead and change this, you'll see, so if you have different profiles or areas that you want to avoid cutting, you can change the plane. You can also set up interval angles and cut, pull multiple sections from the plane if you had more complex details around the outside. And vertical lines and last vertical lines have to do with whether or not if the tool will cut down the face and down the back of the part. By default, these are set to be removed, which is the normal scenario. So you probably won't have to change these too much. Primary region affects whether or not if grooves will be cut, or if the tool will, if it finds an area lower than the start of cut. In this case, I have a groove, and I'd want to use a separate operation for this area. So I would allow the software to calculate only the primary region, which are going to be the straight cuts that do not have any grooves or any arcs cutting down into the shape. We'll go ahead and confirm our selection. And I'm going to compute the toolpath. In this case, I'm not going to edit yet. I just want to take a look at this. See in this, prime, this side right here, you have is your primary region, the outside. So if you chose not to remove the primary region, 
the tool, if it fit, would attempt to cut down into this groove. Let's go ahead and look at the settings for this toolpath. We'll right click on rough, go to edit, and we can see it. we're still set to separate moves. In this case we are doing a turning rough, and we left our system compensation on. You can also use the save button here to save the defaults for this page or for this information as you're programming. Our rapids are still set to default. And in here we do not necessarily need an additional lead in lead out onto the part. If you'd like to, you can add a lead in in Z or an X and the same thing for the lead out. Our tool, this time we'll use select from list. I'll choose a 80 degree 130 second rough turning tool, click OK, and that pulls in all of our tooling information. Choose OK, and after making any changes you'll want to recompute the toolpath. Let's go ahead and look at this groove. Now to machine this groove, we're going to do very similar, right click turning stock, go to turn and groove. Right click geometry, left click reselect, and we'll come in and we'll pick the surfaces that affect our groove, which would be these three here. We'll confirm our selection, edit the groove, and it will tell it again whether this is turning or facing. In this case it would be coming from the outside pecking down, which would be a turning operation. And we'll leave this system compensation turned on. Now if we want to peck into the part, we'll fill out our peck amount, our peck increment, our clearance, and our retract values, and also our step over. If we've already machined away some material like we have in here, we can then change our stock diameter at this point. We've already removed almost two inches of material, so our stock diameter has changed, so we do not need to peck from the outside of the stock working down. Let's say that that groove is about three-eighths of an inch deep. So our stock that's remaining from the inside of this groove to the outside of the part is three-eighths of an inch. This way we're not machining or cutting air at the feed rate. We'll leave our default rapid. Our default or additional lead-ins, we'll leave those set to zero. You can also use these lead-ins for adding a chamfer if you'd like. Come to our grooving tool. We'll go ahead and change our tool to 32nd of an inch, only because that area is pretty small. Set up our feed rates and our RPM. Choose OK, and then compute our toolpath. And here I can see the grooving operation. Now for internal cuts, it's pretty much the same thing only we'll need to change the orientation of the tool. Let's go ahead and look at that. We'll right click turning stock, go to turn, and we'll choose rough again. We'll right click our geometry, choose reselect. Now we'll pick the inside shape. Now if you had a more complex inside shape, you may need to actually cut your model in half or set up a section view so it's a little bit easier to see the inside of the model. or you can change your view within SOLIDWORKS or use the select other option. Now we already have the inside selected. We'll go ahead and confirm our selection. We'll right click on rough, go to edit, and we're going to do a turning operation with system compensation on. We'll use the default rapids and the default leads. We'll come to rough. Now in here, we'll go ahead and use this tool, but what's important here is our orientation would now be a 4 since we're doing an ID cut. This lets the software know when it computes the toolpath to compute the toolpath on the inside of the part. We'll change the color so we can see the toolpath a little bit better. Now we can see the toolpath leads down inside of our part for the boring. You may see that there's a few more details in here. If you just want to machine separate areas, you can use a single tool path on those areas. Uh, you may want to lead, read a little bit more in the help system about setting up the lathe. It's fully documented. But at this point, we're ready to either post our code or simulate the part. 
if we're going to post the code, we'll come select the post processor that we want to use. And then right click turning tools and go to post. And if we want to simulate the part, we'll come to our Bob Kemp tab and then choose lathe simulation. And it'll take a moment, but the lathe simulation will pop up on the screen. And we can see our part and also the lathe tools and our tool path. You can change some of those settings in here and what's displayed. At this point, we're ready to run our part. And we'll get a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in the order of cuts. And we close out of our lathe simulation and see our part. And that concludes this video.